good counters on the red side. If you are not getting strong counters, if you're not winning with those lanes, then simply, even if that's not the reason you are losing, it is a reason you are losing and that you are not getting the, any advantage from picking red side, right? You know, a blind is here and a Nara that is losing lane to a rumble is not an effective use of counter base. Yeah, absolutely. The Nar is the one that jumps up to me because banning away both of the mid laners, the Zillion, and I believe it was also the Syndra, and then t picking the Azir, sure, you're trying to pinch that mid pool, mm -hmm. but then he gets to go ahead and counter pick, pick the Ari. Sure, it wasn't great for Demonte, but the Nar, instead of having bans towards the carry champions of Rumble, meant that the compositions against each other just really kind of favored Echo Fox. Yeah, and the fact that Dardoch, who I think is, is the biggest skill disparity you know, in Echo Fox's favor, uh, as far as these two teams go, he gets the advantageous jungle matchup. He was three levels up over Grig at times. That is, yes, that is a champion disadvantage, but that is also player skill coming into effect there. And you know, maybe they should give Grig a little bit more help in the draft, put him in a matchup that is not so bad for him, uh, where he doesn't just get put that far behind. We'll see what happens here, though, because the bands are almost the same. Braum, Shane, Jay, for TSM, as that last one does give Demonte first pick rise. But Sejuani is just asking Dark to play a carry. Yep. Braum was banned away by Fox in game one, and then it made itself uh, come into game two. And then there's all these things here that are changing in terms of supports. But TSM, this is back to Sejuani Aurelia combo, because the Aurelia, the Q will place a stack of the Sejuani passive. So it is quite good in terms of ganking for that lane, but they think it's a counter pick to the rise. Demonte has done very well both games on rise though. Both of them were first picked. He played into the Aurelia, did well, played into the Syndra, did well. So certainly he has been performing exceptionally on this champion and right back to the Tom Kench, we are kind of back to a lot of what has happened in game one. In game one, it was actually the Dardoch Poppy as the answer and he did perform pretty well but uh, didn't work out. This time around, they're gonna swap that over to the Trundle, which is a very consistent answer to that Sejuani. Yeah, it really does mess up the Sejuani, the Aftershock plus the passive, giving you temporary resists. The, the Subjugate from Trundle will steal the resists, and then she goes into the negative after they fall off, but he keeps those bonuses. So it's actually probably the hardest counter pick you can have to Sejuani in team fights, which is what she wants to be doing. Last pick, TSM. Kaius has won all three games. They'll pick it here for Sven. And this is the changeup because what happened with TSM was in game one, they picked Kaisa Sejuani instead of Sejuani Aurelia. And then that made Fox pick Tom Kent's Draven. Here they picked the Trundle to counter the Sejuani. And then TSM picked the Kaisa here. Probably ban Draven. Yeah, that's the question. Do you ban out the Draven? If you don't, then you're basically just running back the first draft with, you know, Poppy change out for a Trundle. So Draven does get banned, but this also leaves up more carry top laners for Huni, which is something you had talked about, Cyrene, and you know, one of the issues you felt there was with the draft, because Huni had performed very well, and typically that's kind of his comfort, is things like GP and, and the Rumble and these sorts of champions is really in his wheelhouse. Yeah, and having that type of champion where you now you can't ban out both of them, do you ban out any of them, or do you just tax loss yeah. the champion pool, put uh, Ponser on a champion that's going to be pretty neutral in the top lane, maybe a tank to support this front lineup that they have? Uh, there's the Cho'Gath ban from huh. Fox, which is really interesting. It is, so they, they actually want a carry versus carry, and that does kind of lend itself to thinking Hauntzer is going to last pick. So if you actually pick your support here and then last pick Hauntzer, and you put Huni on a carry, and then you say, Hauntzer, all right, slam him in a carry versus carry, get that last pick counter pick and see what you can get done. Another support ban there though for Fox, so again, trying to make sure that whatever they end up with in bottom lane is a winning 2v2. Yeah, Morgana jumps to mind, and then also potentially, there are some freshes, but I would say Morgana Pike are the two that really jump out to me in this draft that are left available and would be decent into the Tom catch. Yeah, I think Morgana, if you're wanting to win lane, is really strong. Um, and this is very interesting. Ooh. So they ban out the Cho'Gath and they actually pick the Rumble. So taking that away from Huni. And Rumble is considered very good into GP generally, so I'm not sure that Huni would want to play this. I have seen people make it through laning phase by rushing a Cowl and going early Spirit Vistage and this sort of thing. I believe we saw it actually in Licorice versus uh, Someday, I believe earlier in the split. So we have seen it a couple times. Not sure if Huni's gonna wanna go for that matchup. Yeah, it, the matchups into Rumble are always really volatile. You can go for the Gnar here and have a, a matchup that you should be winning. You can go for Riven and really hard counter him or Yasuo because you just punish him all throughout the lane phase and have more mobility so that if you have any sort of small advantage over him, the Rumble can't escape you. I also really like the Ash here. When there is not a top lane tank, there is only one person that really wants to get hit by that There's arrow. No way. If he does it,
it. This would be insane. There's no way. Oh, he got it. It. <laughs> Match point for Echo Fox. Hootie says he's going to lock it in. Lucian Top. He is either a hero or a zero after this game. There is no in between for Huni. And Nami would be another huge lane focused pick if they want to go for it. I mean, this is this is insane. If you lock in the Nami, again, there are four big targets for that Ash Arrow. I think we're going to get it. They are going all in on, on this lane focused 2v2. Kaisa and Nami should be very heavily favored against this Tom Kench. Tom Kench should not be able to do almost anything in this 2v2. At the same time, though, Huni going ultra aggressive, wants to slam this top lane. This is insane. Two and a half years ago, Huni played top lane Lucian into TSM, into Hauntzer, who counterpicked it with Maokai, and it has been one of the biggest stains Wait, no, they, on his putting, career. They're putting the Rise top, perhaps. And that's here. kind of the pivot, is potentially it's Demonte mid huh. up against the Aurelia on it, but they have until 20 seconds to swap it. I am very interested to see. It looks like it's going to stay. So it is actually Rise Top into the Rumble. Um, All right. And it is going to be Lucian into the Aurelia, which I can see as something because you have that range advantage, you could bully early. But I don't know if that's a, a good matchup I'm there scared. for Demonte. Yeah. If Demonte messes up at all, he is going to get all in time and time and time again. And Bjergsen could slam that matchup. Bjergsen is going Ignite. He wants to destroy Demonte and carry his team into a fifth and final game. This one is going to be explosive. And Demonte has to play defensively. Cleanse has to come out because he's up against the Sejuani. You have to pay the Sejuani Cleanse tax in the mid lane so you don't get ultimate thrown at you. You don't get locked up by Bjergsen. And so he's not going to have an aggressive summoner spell. This is just a crazy game coming out here. We get the Nami from Mithy. So lane focused there with this pick. We get Lucian mid, rise top. This is carries across the map. I just like that it feels like Echo Fox have shown that they can play kind of to the strengths of TSM. And TSM are like, all right, as we fall further <laughs> further down in this series, I guess we're going to play a little bit more like Echo Fox. I mean, the gauntlet is just being thrown down here. Demonte picking that, the, the Lucian. We were just assuming it's for Huni. Yeah, of course. And it's going to be for Demonte. You were going up against historically the most successful player in any LCS history, and you're like, yeah, no problem. I'll play into his Ignite Aureli with my Lucian. Yeah, that is incredibly risky from Demonte. And it's one that, you know, Huni, I'm going to talk about him again because this is the frame of reference. He has taken these risks before, mm -hmm. and they have blown up in his face. And once again now, his team, Demonte here playing the Lucian into it. This is going to be one word. We're watching the mid lane, and I believe everybody in this game is going to be watching mid lane. It's also how stars are born. You know, you, you take these risky matchups, you take these skill matchups, and you outplay these established players. You prove that you can be on or above their level. And I think, you know, with a game to give, I respect it. I respect the, the fact that Echo Fox are willing to dance the dance and take a risk here when they're up 2-1 to one in this series. You have a chance to close it out. Yeah. Many a man has made a career from beating Bjergsen, but Bjergsen has yet to really acknowledge anybody in North America as the person who can kill him, take him down. And that right there, I noticed the sweeper that was picked up by Smoothie. That's going to mean Demonte hits level two off the first wave. That's actually pretty cute. So pay attention to how that goes around. Of course, Fox spot lane is going to leash here for Stardock. Same on this blue here for TSM. I'm going to be really interested to actually track uh, Stardock jungle pathing as nice trade there from Bjergsen because while this 2v2, I think, is very abusive with the Nami Kaisa, if you push in the Tom Kench under the turret and you're just nonstop poking him out, you're sustaining up, it's going to be very tough. Nami, whenever you talk to a pro player, you say, why is there no Nami? They say, too easy to gank, too susceptible to getting picked off. So with that trundle, if you can get in there and pillar in the Nami, you have a chance to all in and actually kill him off. So we'll see, is Echo Fox just going to sacrifice the bot lane again, or do they want to go down there and pick on the Nami? And the other thing is, a lot of people will be like, why don't you like playing Trundle? Yeah, it's hard to gank. It's hard <laughs> to get those ganks off. It's not a hard CC. And he want, we kind of want to go to the lanes that have the hard CC to give to you, which would be a little bit of this bottom lane. But Huni, when you have a point and click on a Rumble that is hard to escape, uh, I would say that that's probably the lane that he's going to start focusing, is that top side there. Nice going for the two-on-two on two like he did last game. Last two of the Rift there from Lost. He does put out Greg here on the red buff. Dardock also likely just going to be playing maybe a bit more passively than normal. This is something that I think maybe doesn't get acknowledged enough from Dardock. He's a great carry player, one of the best 
from jungle in the league, but he can also play tank. He's willing to, and he is good at them as well. And I would say he, he's a really intelligent pathing jungle. He really does do a great job. As Nice job there by Demonte, dashing out of the stun, but he does a good job with his pathing, and that's how he got such a big level lead in the previous game, by you know, outthinking Greg, by taking away camps constantly from his opponent. Oh, and the trade's just constantly, gotta watch that E. He actually duked him that time. Demonte E'd before the second E came out from Bjergsen. So those mind games are starting to be played already. And he also getting his turret pushed in, but should be fine just to clear these out. I think this, you know, it's a, while it's a small thing, it's so smart from Bjergsen. He spends all three of his Corruption Potion charges to just trade aggressively and shove out the wave immediately back to base for a Doran Shield. And that is just such intelligent play because most of the advantage is in this ranged matchup from Demonte. So he spends all his resources to go back to base and reset at a good time. And it's the early game too. The Lucian early game is the part where he's going to be oppressive like we were talking about in Champions League. And all Aurelia has to do is survive the matchup and get to a point where she's going to be able to just buy a Trinity Force and blow him up. I mean, you hit level six on even keel. I think you can look for kills. Here's Dardock though. Oh, good tongue left. Great pillar. That's going to force the flash, but the exhaust is down. A good Fox thought about diving forward, but they just back away. Yeah, really nice gank there from Dardock. They'll have to repeat that though, because again, if you leave this in an isolated 2v2, the Nami will sustain you down, will poke you out. Yeah, and the Nami is just going to bring a lot to the table here in terms of just making sure they can't just... You pick the losing matchup or you got counter pick, and so you kind of do damage control here. Granted, it's two range, but the Tom Kent plus the Ash, the Ash outranging the Kai'Sa mm -hmm. is the big thing where you can't really counter damage there, so... The Nami is just good to neutralize it, but also you're still losing the win. Once they gain with another Duke out of a stun, gets a really nice trade actually, despite still waiting to get to level five. Greg, though, thanks to pressure by Bjergsen, he's gonna steal away that Raptor camp, so it does take that away from Dada. And this looks like it's not Demonte's first rodeo. He's actually CSing under turret quite well on the Lucian, and sometimes those double shots go off when you don't want them to, so full control of it from what I saw. Yeah, definitely doing a nice job there, but at the same time, Bjergsen, Sticking with his game plan, expend all the corruption post charges, shove in your opponent, spam out those spells, back to base, buy, move back out. Yeah. He is not allowing Demonte to really exploit him in these early levels. Yeah, he's just making it so that he's going to use those corrupting potions as a resource, mm -hmm. and his HP is a resource to shove the wave, and don't stay in lane with low HP or no potions. So he just keeps going back and refilling it. He's gotten so much value out of this corrupting potion already. Yeah, it has paid for itself almost twice. Yeah. Looks like Sven though is going to take a recall and likely TP back here to the bot side. Picks up two long swords and a dagger. Storm Razor. Luzi though, ooh, looking for mid. He doesn't quite grab that tongue lash. Yeah, way pushing towards Fox. They feel pretty comfy here. Again, using that range advantage to try and abuse as Greek does come down here to look for a gank. Yeah, Dardock on the top side of the map, so Lost and Smoothie need to be playing carefully here. And what I, I think really the kind of win condition here for Echo Fox in their bottom lane is now that you have gotten a little bit of pressure from that gank, you can wait till six or wait till your jungler comes and then you have to look for an all in. You can't take these short trades because Nami always throws you back up. Yeah, and I think TSM are giving a little bit too much of a tell here. That's Mithy throwing out a bubble, which you don't normally do on, on Nami willy-nilly. Even when you're going for aggressive trades, if you fish for a bubble and you miss it, you have no more pressure. So that was one where it looked like Fox said, okay, that was strange and they didn't punish the thrown out bubble. TSM is moving up here though. Echo Fox should back off. Yeah, they're trying to get this pretty quickly, but TSM's bot lane gonna roam up. That means Greg is able to secure the Scuttle Crab. It doesn't go Echo Fox too much here. Is Huni gonna chase down Hornsa? He did finally take the recall, but he had to use his TP and only has mana crystals really to speak of. That's still gonna give him damage though as the rise. He's he's denying Hauntzer getting to the minion wave too. Hauntzer's actually lost uh, one creep so far, but it's getting stacked against him. And now Dardox on the opposite side, so there really isn't a capitalization here. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see how this actually plays out. As Grig comes up to the top lane, there's certainly potential to look for an all-in here on Huni. But look at his experience bar. He's almost six. If he soaks one or two creeps, he's going to have level six as this gank happens. Well, it's a six now as well. So is Huni. There's the flash. Huni, does he know how to get out of this one? He's gonna go he there it is. and get out of the way oh. with the old. Not quite enough for a stun. Very well played from Huni, and now Dardock back to the bottom side. Sven has no flash. He's level six. He just uses it immediately on Sven. Good flash through the bubble. Demonte over the top as well. 
And there's the mid lane grabbing first blood. So well done for Peak Gank on the flash. They can now get this first turn potentially here. The next wave's coming in, so they will get it. Great roam from Demonte and Dardock. Infernal up as well, so a lot to choose on here for Echo Fox. Looks like Lot and Smoothie will stick around to take the turret. The blue buff goes to Demonte as well. And so Bjerks has been surviving that mid lane matchup with constant backs. Demonte is now thriving in it from going to other lanes. Sure, he's not going to beat up Bjerks because he keeps avoiding him. He's going to go to other lanes alongside Dardock for so keeping that game. TSM is rushing down here. There's actually going to TP in. We'll see if Dardock can get this and get out. Isn't that the Smoothie have smite? No, it doesn't matter. Dardock able to get it. Smoothie is going to devour him. Flash out of the way. Arrow from Lost prevents Greek from coming in, and they steal the Drake and get out of there. And that's perfect for Echo Fox. They get the Infernal, they get out, and they got the teleport to boot which means that Haunter, he's gonna have to stay in that top lane. Yeah, and here it is one more time. They know Sven has no flash. Dardock flashes over the bubble in front of him. Demonte comes in, easy first blood. They get the Infernal to follow that up. They get the TP and ultimate out of Rumble as well. So that is so, so big. Buying that time for Huni and really kind of getting away with everything. Yeah, and in that Acer Predator replay, you saw that Dardock, we said, man, this guy likes playing tanks. He's still playing it like a carry, aggressive. Flashes, gets the Q off, gets the slow. They don't get the bottom turret just yet. That tier one is still standing, but the Infernal was the bigger prize there. Well, pretty greedy play from Echo Fox, but for once, it does not come back to bite them. Up a decent amount of gold, but that first Infernal is nice. TSM have kind of had the run of the Drake through most of this as Demonte continuing to just frustrate Bjergsen, who's trying again to play aggressive and get out on the map. Yeah, Bjergsen. Is, is on Sheen now, and he's level 8 with the Ignite, so certainly does have some pretty strong all-in potential. Yeah, has that all-in potential, but now look at that. Huni gets the blue as the top laner. That's a feels-good man as the rise, because they already gave the enemy blue over to Demonte, and they've been denying him for Bjergsen. Actually, I was mistaken, but still the first turret does go to Echo Fox. TSM trying to trade. They've moved to Sven, Haunter, and Grig up there. This could be a pretty easy take, but again, Fox, they're gonna get the, the first pick of these objectives. Yeah, Lost is actually rotating to mid lane. His ultimate, if you look, is just coming up now. So they could look for a pick here. If Monster chases in, could get hit with an Ash Arrow to the face. So not gonna pillar him up. Maybe that's a target. Hooney Realm Lost over. He actually does go in, can't quite get to the edge of it. The Nami wave, maybe gonna cause some problems. Hooney burning down, but Smoothie again, able to devour him up. Smoothie cleanses out of the way, but Bjergsen dives over the top. Takes down Hooney, takes down Smoothie. And that's a double kill for Bjergsen. This is gonna be, we said, we gotta watch the mid lane. Now, all the kills are on the two mid laners. These guys are gonna be going toe to toe and when an Aurelia gets through the early parts of the game and gets fed, that becomes so scary for a marksman. Um, yeah, and Bjergsen, I mean, he is that franchise player. He is the guy that the desk was saying, get him on something that's more proactive. Get on something that can play me. Aurelia certainly is that. With these early kills, he's going to get a pretty quick Triforce, and this is a squishy team. You can dive on, really, the Rise or any of those marksmen. They take the Rift Child, but Dardock again, he said it was the Bjergsen show. But in pretty good right now as TSM take the Rift Child and show. take the outer turret. Oh, not quite yet. It's moving lost, able to get keep for a little while longer. Hey, it is a good show, the Bjergsen show, but at the same time, it's one that hasn't played very often, you know? Not Have, this split. Haven't had too many reruns this way. And this, our Acer Predator replay, as we will watch it one more time. TSM chasing into Dardock here, and I think Echo Fox wanted to fight, but maybe underestimated the rumble damage in this corridor. And this was, like you said, Echo Fox wanting to fight. They think they can take it. Uni goes through with the Realm Warp, too aggressive without vision control of that area, which is a TSM's favor. They kind of thought that Haunter was being a fool, and they made a fool out of Huni. Well, gold is almost back to even. Fox still up thanks to the turret, but again, TSM will equalize that. Pretty soon here, you have to think in the 2v2. Yeah. I mean, that turret is a stiff breeze away from going down, so... But very likely, they could collect that pretty easily. Even even if you don't have minions, at that point, you can walk up and auto it if Echo Fox ever doesn't have members there, so... We'll see. And if things get uh, desperate, you have the Rift Herald on top of it that they picked up. You have to say, though, this Nami pick really hasn't gotten TSM too much. Yes, a lot of that is because of the jungle pressure from Dardock and because of the roam down from Demonte, but that is part of it. Huni now on the escape. Yeah, gets equalized. Now gonna have to turn it back around onto Haunts. That throws out one combo, but two more from TSM coming. Dardock with a good killer. He's gonna buy a little bit more time, but Huni finally back towards the turret. Still getting burnt down. Haunts are almost gonna do a solo trick. Gonna ult, but there's a flash out from Huni, and now Dardock will actually force them away. That was so Oh, he's in there. Oh. Hold on. 
Woo. Not able to take him down, but that was so damn good from Huni because he had, he has to 100% save his flash for the Sejuani ultimate. And you saw what Hanser was doing was trying to get the flash yeah. as desperately as he possibly could. Throws down Rumble ultimate, even flashes onto Huni and says, you got a flash for Hold on, he's going to gank He's keeping in, he has Realm Warp available, I believe he could look for it. When you get ganked, Hunter now you're, you're the one getting ganked. Hanser, little too far forward. Huni says, yep, I'll collect this one. Gonna wait for Dada Kazal, but Hanser's got nowhere to run but the wave. Pillar up, gives an assist. And that's the kill over. Haunter just doesn't want to give it over to Huni, but he can't do anything. So well done. This is two games in a row now. Huni looking back on form in carries. That flash, as you said, the patience around it was beautiful. Then TP's back in, gets the kill, and is going to be on the push here in the bottom lane. TSM are down without Haunter, and he doesn't have TP, so there is some pressure coming out around the map. Yeah, they will recover and get that top turret, but seriously, the hold on that flash from Huni cannot be overstated. It was fantastic because he, you usually want the flash to just avoid the damage that's going to come out, but he did a great job of avoiding it with the fancy footwork and then calling the bluff, and that's what gets him the kills, that he stays alive. The mid turret also there for Echo Fox. They're able to take it now. Two turrets to one. The gold lead's still staying pretty close, but another Ocean Drake up in 15, and it just feels like Echo Fox are starting to outmap and outpressure TSM, not just in this game, but throughout the series. And it's going to be a scary team fight for Greg when he comes in, as both these marksmen are going to finish their Blade of the Rune Kings. You're going to get Trundle ulted. You will be paper. And it's scary for Greg. It's also a little bit scary for those marksmen. Bjergsen just now getting the Trinity Force at the 14-minute mark here. So if these fights break out, it's going to be on Bjergsen's back. And then also you have spent with the completed Storm Razor. And it becomes so much about individual skill. How well can you play around this? Can you avoid Bjergsen stuns? Can you dodge out of that Grig ultimate? Because these marksmen, if they avoid and absorb the incoming CC, then you can turn around and really crush through. Smart Herald though there from TSM, knowing the Drake is up, Shelly will charge in, but Smoothie commits his ult to make sure they can save the turret for a little while longer. However, I don't think they can also save the Ocean Drake. Looks like TSM will be able to get that objective. Yep, and Kaisa just does so much damage to it with the Plasma. Pretty much not capped on the damage, has no way that it, uh, no cooldown either. So they're actually all gonna rotate to the bottom, leave Bjergsen in mid to fend by himself. Again, trying to trade, top lane. If a fox, but it should be relatively equal on turrets. Mid tower, you have to think, is going down in just a minute or two, and TSM will collect the bottom out of. Yeah, we'll see if TSM decide to continue to push. It looks like they are not, as they're allowing that wave to kind of thin out. They sent Monster back up to the top, so it does just end up in that even trade, and Huni will be able to uh, absorb this. But a lot of TSM members now moving up towards that middle lane, uh, where Lost and Smoothie are sitting. Well, oh, they get, get separated. Stun, stun lands. Plus can't get over there. He does have flash. He's forced to use it. You can't let that happen. I mean, the whole point of Tom Kench is sticking right to him. And Monster up on the top side. All of TSM is coming up here. Dardock and Demonte need to run. Dardock subjugates and turns around to fight. Here's the TP, though, from TSM. Demonte going to try and get a kill. They will take down Horta with the collapse is there. Bjergsen again grabs the shot down. That's such a good call from Fox. He's like, they should run. Actually, just turn on him. They go and they get the kill. Dardock now has to find a way out of here. Yeah, Dardock gets out. That's pretty worthwhile. It does hurt giving the shutdown to Bjergsen, though, who is already very, very strong. Either way, a good response in a tough situation here for Echo Fox. It's still the best of the bad, right? Yeah. This is where it looks like you're just going to get slowed. This entire team's going to come up and massacre you, and they have to go now, because otherwise the Nami gets in there, the Nami gets the heal off in time, the Nami gets to help them out and get the wave across. So that was a really good call from Echo Fox to counter the aggression with aggression. And they got the TP out from Zen, but here it is looking one more time. Yeah, Lost again, again. Another good flank. There's the flash to Arrow. Smoothie going to try and spit Lost out somewhere safe. He may be dead as a result of it. Lost. Arrow's back around. Grig. He's taking the turret. Smoothie. Pops the gray out. Grig goes down. Fox turn it around again. And Smoothie saving Lost, being right in front. And then the counter from Lost. He said, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. The <laughs> arrow to make sure he doesn't die and he keeps his support alive. Yeah, so well done there from Smoothie. Buying a lot of time, waiting the maximum amount of time before he actually spat him out, giving him a lot of distance, and then using the gray health once it was essentially fully stacked up there. 
Well, watch this one again. Smoothie, it seems like Lost is all but doomed, but Smoothie playing back. He knows to try and save his AD. Yeah, and this time Lost actually running back to Smoothie as he should. The arrow buys some time. Smoothie able to survive long enough for the Grey Elf to come out, and the damage just gets straight up turned around. And that was perfectly played there from that duo, and you can see Devante is like, well, let's go. Because they are on match point. They are about to take TSM out of the playoffs again. And what world are we in where TSM picked the Fox comp, Fox play reactive, and they continually punish TSM <laughs> Fox, showing so many looks in just three, now four games. And like you said, they're in about at the press press, about to push TSM off that cliff, and once again in a quarterfinal exit. TSM, though, certainly still are going to have their opportunities here. Rumble plus Aurelia, so much Demonte is insane. He dives in. He always gets Smithy, but he is going to be forfeit, I believe. No, Smoothie really? able to save him time and time again on the time. Dalek pops the watch. He's subjugated as well, so I think he may be able to get out of there. The Kaisa trying to land in shots, but Dalek a bit of flash out of the last second. And Sven, he knows he can't go too far forward. <gasps> Oh, does he, he go has, and he, he has, has ulti, the he has ult. ulti. Not in range, I don't think. With the just the rank one ultimate there, it looked like he probably was not in range. And Huni trying to dive Monster at the same time here. Madness across the map as TSM though come out on top with the HP damage. They are pushing. And that is huge. Sven also, he wanted to commit to it. He flashed to try and R off of that W, but he wasn't in range because the Trundle Pillar. Huni again. Finds another target. Grig, though, is going to be saved by the rest of his teammates. But now Huni, he's the one pressuring. Hortz in the one for one, where earlier it was the other way around. He's up in CS, he's up in pressure. Fox, it just feels like they can do no wrong. Yeah, and I mean, he's actually absorbing that pressure without dying, right? This is what has been missing for Huni for a while, and it feels like he really is stepping up in these big moments. But for TSM, you still have good engage. You still have tons of damage to get back and soften up those marksmen and give the opportunity for Bjergsen, your star, your Fed member, to dive in and clean up a fight. And it's going to be a lot on the shoulders of Bjergsen here. Yeah, but you remember even just a week, week ago, the Akali was busted out, and then Bjergsen, it was 100% the Bjergsen show. But right here, this was the start off where Demonte went forward, tried to kill Mithy off of this, gets knocked up, almost gets it, the heal saving Mithy there, and then even though Tom Kench is nerfed, it doesn't matter. You get one. You save your boy. You save Demonte. And hold on. That's not going to save him. Dardock, though, looking to try and burn it down. Bjergsen will be forfeit. Shutdown goal to Dardock. It is a shutdown, but 1v2. Bjergsen comes up with a kill. Echo Fox looking like they want to head over towards Baron. We'll see if they're going to start it up here. They've been they so go right back to mid. They've been so confident in their objective calls all series long. And Mithy goes over. Fox again just regroup. Push the mid back out. They've been confident in their objective calls to the point where TSM are not confident if Echo Fox is actually starting the Baron or not because they've actually slipped a lot of Baron. And Aaron's lost with the setup by Dardock. He's forced the killer instinct away. The Mikhail's so big there from Mithy. He rushed it for that very reason. Keeps Sven safe in what could have been a kill into Baron. Yeah, and because Sven had blown the flash last time, he didn't have it here to make sure that he could, could dodge the arrow or even get away. So the killer instinct after turning and then making sure he had the plasma was great. Fox want to fight for this Drake so badly, but I'm not sure they really have the tools right now. Bjergsen is back up. Again, he has all of the kills on TSM. He is the man that must carry them through this mid game. He must carry. He's hard to match the side lane for anybody right now. And it's only going to get stronger because his Aurelia scales. This is not just that, oh, she's hit her one power spike in the game and she'll fall off. She becomes massive against these carries, both the Lucian and the Ash. This is basically they're on the Baron again. Fox just know they're on the Drake to actually pull away though. That will be Drake TSM as a result. The Echo Fox try to get them to come over, but Hunter, you know, and TSM playing is pretty intelligently. Just leave one member behind who has the TP to finish off that dragon. Well, the rest of the team responds, so uh, they do push them off the Baron. They do secure that dragon. And it's double ocean for TSM, which is going to give you a lot of staying power. Right here, Bjergsen actually used the E already. Cleans up the wave, and so he doesn't have it here, but he still outplays. Yeah, and he's fully stacked up with that with those Q stacks, he had already got that up to four stacks, so able to just burst down the Lucian despite the fact he has no stun available. And Echo Fox, though, minions pushing on top side, Cooney shoving out on the bottom side. They are looking 
for the full court press. Continually asking the question, can you stop us at Baron Hooney? Continually put pushing there in the bot lane. Fox throwing everyone else top to try and pressure. At some point, TSM are going to run out of good decisions. Yeah, I mean, Hooney, he's winning in this 1v1. And Haunter is having to build armor and build towards the Estonias to deal with some of these marksmen and making it tougher and tougher for him in the 1v1. And Hooney's actually going uh, Abyssal Mask here. So hold on. Ooh. That flash from DeMonte saves his life. That's Gerksen all down. Yep. And Greg didn't even get the chance to go up and maybe get his cleanse too with the Sejuani ultimate. So he holds on to that, which is exactly what you want. Dardock's doing a great job of shadowing. Yeah, I mean, it is a good flash from Demonte, but at the same time, Bjergsen happy to take that trade, gets the summoner down. You just need to wait for that ultimate to be back up. But Echo Fox just pressing so hard. TSM looking to close in. Five members up here from TSM. They're looking for Demonte now. Equalizer, Smoothie is there for the save. Stun land, Smoothie knows to get him out. Greg, ulti, fight the front side of Smoothie, the tanks in his vest, Killer Instinct's in, Hooney's TPing through, Smoothie gonna try and buy as much time as he can, he finally falls, and Hooney cancels the TP. TSM are looking for the rest of these Fox members, but they will back away. It's gonna be TSM heading to Baron here, Hooney used the TP, came very late, had to cancel it, and now it is a 5v4 for TSM around the Baron, no flash on Demonte. Hooney's just gonna do some poke damage here on the grid. Pressuring. Bjergsen on the side. Bjergsen again looks for Lost. There, get the flash Q. Lost is gonna get them down the stun. Doesn't land, but it doesn't matter. Bjergsen expends the flash for the carry kill. And now Hooney caught again. Bjergsen again. The Theros, but Hooney again, there's the stun. And TSM are back in this game. They're gonna get this Baron here, pending a potential steal, but Dardoch's not gonna risk that. TSM are gonna even it up, and this series has been so close. Yeah, such a big set of plays there for TSM. Bjergsen burning the flash from DeMonte in that side lane. That prompts the all-in. They go for it, and they chase down Echo Fox as Hooney was splitting, and yes, they get a tier two, but this may be DeMonte dying now, too. Yeah, Bjergsen finds the wolf, looks for the stun. DeMonte, he needs to play mind games. He doesn't money. get it. He's over the wall. Smoothie, again, trying to save private DeMonte. Gets this on Bjergsen. Too much damage. This is another vintage Bjergsen game in a season just full of clouds for TSM. They finally part and the star once again comes out and Bjergsen is playing out of his mind. He's just refusing to lose. Throws down the stun. Flash Q to place the stun further behind, so no way out for loss. He has to dodge into the blue pit and then wrapping around onto Hooney. Another stun lands there for Bjergsen, so nicely done. Yeah, six, one, and one. He has only missed out on a single kill. When you hear TSM, when you hear Team Solo Mage, you think of this type of performance from Bjergsen. He's a five-time NALCS winner for a reason. With almost 100% KP here on the array, looking to carry TSM to a fifth game. And Fox, they're just feeling so much pressure now. And he has bought so much time for his vent. Bjergsen has had to do a lot of the heavy lifting, but soon you're gonna have a Kai'Sa on three items. And this guy is gonna really become a monster in those team fights as we've seen before. Well, wave to here, Cooney. There's still two minutes left of Baron for Fox to try and play against. And it is Bjergsen getting the mid wave going on this Aurelia. No real way to challenge here for Fox. I think they must concede these tier two turrets. Yeah, it would have to be Hooney with the wave clear because otherwise it's just these marksmen. And remember, this Aurelia was locked in. They threw down the Lucian as the counter pick here in mid lane, thinking it would work. And Bjergsen was able to find two kills outside of the lane. He's been able to pick on Demonte the whole time, even though Demonte got the first blood. Fox, though, they're trying, always looking for a fight, even when the situation looks like this. Gold is still close, but again, the Baron is just giving that advantage to TSM. Gold is close, and you have the Infernal at Echo Fox, so the right fight can be a win for them, but they have to play this intelligently. They want that Baron buff to expire before they really commit to anything. Still a minute 15 till that is. That's also perfect timing with the Infernal Drake. Jerks it again, fishes forward, zones away as he moves out the stuns. And this next Infernal could be where a lot of the game is decided. Fighting around that could be huge for both these teams. Chock full of damage. You have to be patient. Greg on the front line. Tanks up some of Hooney's damage. Ben turning it back around. Blast Hooney for about 40% of his HP. And it's hard to appreciate because the double ocean break for TSM just means that even if you kind of counter damage here, they're just going to heal it up. 45 seconds on this Baron. They'll get one more wave. Walk it in. Two more, actually. This one plus the next one for a little bit. 
Mooney back. Full oh, mana pool break goes. with the dive. They find the front line. But again, folks, they're going to try to run. Who holds them with an equalizer? That maybe put your CSM all the way in. And Bjergsen, he is dancing around the Echo Fox carries. TSM put all the way in. Hooney just buying time as Bjergsen, he lines up the quadra. It's a quadra for Bjergsen. He is feeling it taunting onto Hooney in that Zonia's Hourglass. Give me the assassin, give me the carry, give me the kills, and give me game number five. Bjergsen will push TSM to where he always has the Penta kill and the chance for another finals appearance. Two wins for TSM, make it two Penta kills. What a carry performance here from the mid lane superstar. Counter picked in draft. Roams, gets himself kills, ends 11, 1, and 1. You can't ask for a better performance than that from Bjergs. And TSM, they hold firm in what looked like a ton 